Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, today we have before us a very major bill and a very major policy that certainly needs to be addressed. And the accusations that we don't have a plan are absolutely false. They got tabled yesterday without much discussion. The Republicans did have a plan. It stated right in the minority report that there could be no reductions to K-12 or nursing homes. Nobody bothered to read that, of course, as you were hustling to table a bill that focused on the priorities of transportation. And I think that's really where the people are at. In the elections of 2006, I didn't hear the candidates of the day parading around multi-billion dollar tax increases, making the tax code more regressive than ever. And we're hearing requests from the other body, could you come back later tonight? Because if one comma is changed in this bill, then the House has to repass it again. So you can sneak through while the people sleep, while the press corps is not here or paying attention. A multi-billion dollar, the biggest tax increase as far as I know in the history of Minnesota. But wait, we're fiscal moderates, the Democrats said in 2006. We see no reason to raise revenue, they said. What's the definition of fiscal moderates these days? The biggest tax increase in the history of the state of Minnesota? Taxing people in rural Minnesota more than those who can afford to pay somewhere else? We think no one needs to pay more. We need to focus on priority. Rural, metro, suburban, urban, rural, wherever you are, certainly we can put more money into transportation, but it should not have to come out of the pockets of people who are struggling with mortgages, struggling with their health insurance premiums, struggling with gas prices, which you're going to just make higher with your bill, struggling with milk prices. Think about what you're doing here today. And we've got all the sheets here and all the speeches about, oh, look at all the special interest groups that have signed on, standing out in the hallway. I'm not thinking about the special interest groups that signed on to all these sheets or are standing in the hallways who make 10 times more than the average constituent in Lyon or Redwood counties. It is the people that we represent, the people who on every poll at 65 to 70 percent have said no to what you are trying to do, have said no to these large tax increases. Over 70 percent in my district have said no, prioritize your spending. And you say don't do bonding. It's okay to do bonding for all sorts of other things, welcome centers and picnic shelters and the like, but it's not okay to do it for roads and bridges. Where's the priorities? Last year, 16% increase in the budget of the legislature. And we sure saw that in the interim. So I think all of you know where the priorities are with the DFL. Multi-billion dollar tax increases, 16% increases for the legislature, gigantic increases in the welfare budget, never mind that the nursing homes only got less than 2% because you're always hiding behind the skirts of the nursing homes. So thanks for giving them less than 2%. Thanks for giving the schools less than 2% so we can run more bond and excess levy referendums than any time in the last 25 years in the history. More bond and excess levy referendums last year than any time in the last 25 years. And with a straight face, you're trying to say that you're doing the priorities of the people of Minnesota. So last week we increased the sales tax for arts and crafts. This week we increased the sales tax for transit. More regressivity, more regressivity, more regressivity. And then your answer in a couple weeks will be, gee, we have a really regressive tax code. That's horrible. So how about we raise the income tax now? 
and our friends outside the doors of this chamber will be scurrying outside my office. Please don't raise taxes on income and on businesses. Then you might come and say something to me. So it'll be interesting what happens when some folks are interested in some of these other issues. Corporate loopholes being closed, FOCs, taxes on high income brackets. Then apparently the Republican caucus in the Minnesota House of Representatives is relevant. But now we're not. That's my message to my friends outside the door. But the message to my friends in this chamber is that you did not campaign on this type of stuff. You did not campaign on multi-billion dollar tax increases. And if you recess in a few moments rather than adjourn and come back and try to ram it through at 3 in the morning while our constituents are sleeping, shame. How un-Minnesotan. Writing a bill on the floor with oral amendments and all the rest of it that was going on here today. That work should be done in the committees. And for what? We can't come back in the morning and pass this bill when the light of day, the media and the people of Minnesota are watching us. And scurrying around today trying to get votes by rearranging the deck chairs on the tax increasing Titanic as it heads to the iceberg of public opinion. Forget about the special interests. Think about your constituents. What do they honestly think? What are they saying? Are they calling you and asking you to do one thing or another? And many of you can go back home and you can do whatever you want but we represent the people. Not the special interests, not the lobbyists. If any of you noticed who the two presumptive nominees of are the two major parties for president right now, they're not campaigning in the primaries based on what, how many sh people signed off on sheets on the floor. That's what the people want. And so as we head in, the rest of the session. This is a preliminary vote, obviously. The Senate has to do some work. The governor has to do some work. The major vote, obviously, is going to be next week on a bill that will make the tax code more regressive, make the working class pay more, not solve the problem, as has been evidenced by a lot of discussion on the floor today. This doesn't solve the problem, but how many times have we heard that in the last few days? We've offered the olive branch of compromise. Yesterday was our opening bid, if you will, on where we are at. And I thought today would be where the majority is at. In the next several weeks, we have about 40 days and 40 nights of legislative days left to go to wander in the desert of liberalism and eat the locusts of tax increases. <laughs> but in a month or two, we will have a resurrection after the people have their say. And at some point, we'll see the promised land, but not under the group that's in control of this body. Vote no.